Hey guys, so wanted to do a really quick um, book haul video. Um, I don't know if I, I've kind of, if you've watched my videos, you kind of know that like once a week I go to Goodwill, which is semi near my house, uh, my work, um, kind of on a lunch break, um, and just kind of browse through their book section. There's, I think the way Goodwill does it is they pick stores that, that things do well at and they, they send stuff there. So probably their distribution centers kind of send this Goodwill a lot of books because it, they seem to do well there because I've looked at other Goodwills and they have like 25 books and there's not a whole a whole bunch of good ones. And then the one that I go to probably once a week has great selections of books. And sometimes, you know, they have like four shelves of books, um, you know, nonfiction, fiction, kids, uh, kid stuff. So what I'm trying to do is just slowly build up my repertoire and the most I ever pay for a book there is three dollars and that's adult hardbacks are uh, $2.95. Um, kids paperbacks are 97 cents and um, adult paperbacks are $1.91 I believe. So generally maybe spending five to ten dollars once a week on books and it kind of slowly builds up my um, my stock of books, right? Um, so wanted to share a few things with you. Most of the stuff um, has been one or two books every so often. And then, but this week I had two bags of books because I went to half price books and spent like $40, which I feel stupid about, but, um, they're still half price. Right. Um, and then this is Goodwill had a really good day. Um, so I'll share this with you and then I'll just kind of splatter through a couple of the other ones I picked up that I really enjoyed. Um, so starting, I wanted to show you I found all of the very nice illustrated Narnia books, all seven. I kind of shared this on my Discord too. 97 cents a piece. These are the very pretty, in very good condition, almost brand new, most of them. Um, illustrated editions. These are $10 a piece normally, and I got them for 97 cents a piece because they're kids' paperbacks. Um, so I've got the whole series for me and the kids to read. I have a couple of the older ones um, that hopefully, you know, my son's kind of rough on books. So um, I'm asking him to read those. And then these are the nice ones that we can all read together um, and kind of like a collector's thing. Um, but one, two, three, seven um, for less than seven dollars, picked up the whole series. Took me about 15 trips to Goodwill, though. It was not an easy process. I didn't walk in and they were all sitting there. I'd get one at a time. And I actually I use Evernote and I have a list of what I'm missing. So basically I go through the shelves and if I see it and I don't have it, I'll pick it up. But if I do have it, I just kind of keep going. Did the same thing with um, the, what, what's the name of the series? Um, Unfortunate Events. I almost have a full set of those. I think I'm missing like book eight and book 10, um, but I, I have a list and I know that I need to grab this one, this one, and this one. So that's kind of what I do there when I'm going to Goodwill. Um, two other ones, I think these were the same trip. Um, I've wanted to read Old Man's War, but I found book two. So basically, if I do find book one eventually, I'll, I'll go ahead and pick it up. But I have book two because I've heard the series is so good. I actually, NetGalley gave me his whole new series, the Collaps Collapsing Empire series. Um, and I just started that on Kindle, but um, heard good things about Old Man's War and wanted to pick it up. And then I've heard good things about Peter F. Hamilton. And this is book one in his consolidation series. Um, so wanted to try him, haven't read it yet, but I do have it eventually. Same thing here. Um, anytime I see a Terry Pratchett book, I just go ahead and grab it because I know I'm probably going to enjoy it. I got Mort recently. Um, Reaper Man, um, if you've read any of his Discworld stuff, you kind of know why this is an important book. And excited to uh, really get dive into Pratchett. I think I read some when I was 17, 18 and um, want to start reading him again. And the last one that I probably picked up on that same trip, because I have them in the same place, is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Never read this. Don't 100% even know what it's about. But um, I've heard it is very good and want to try it. So I'm hoping that it's one of those that I can uh, be excited about, I think. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe, 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 maybe. This one was a Half Price Books pickup. Um, going through there, they this is when they first opened up again, but this is the entire Book of the New Sun series, starting with the um, Shadow of the Torturer, I believe, is the first book in the series, and I've heard this is amazing, and I really, really, really want to get to it. Um, I believe there are four books in this. Da, 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 I can tell you in a second. Yeah, four books in here, so starting with Shadow of the Torturer, 
uh, the Claw of the Consol Consolator, uh, the Sword of the Lictor, and the Citadel of the Aut Autarch. Um, but I've heard that Gene Wolfe is a master with words and that this series is great. Um, when the guys were talking about the Marsathon, I saw this brought up a lot. And then um, you guys probably know that I like watching uh, Moy Moyhoff. Um, he really raved about this one as well. And so I was excited to find it and pick it up. So something that I've been trying to do with the prices being good is pick up a couple classic books. So I um, found this. This is Beowulf. It's a Signet classic. Um, it... It, I, I really don't know a whole lot about it. I know it's a poem, um, which is interesting for like uh, classic fantasy kind of stuff. Um, and I want to get into it, found it. They had like 15 of these copies. And I said, you know what, might as well grab it when it's cheap. And if I get to it, I get to it, but no hurry to get to it. Um, and then, you know, I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan. And so this is Ro Roverandon, Roverandom, which is... His, uh, he wrote his son a story about a toy dog that came to life, I believe. Uh, 1925, four-year-old Michael Tolkien lost his beloved toy dog on the beach. To console him, his father improvised a story about Rover, a real dog who was magically transformed into a toy and forced to sneak out the wizard who wronged him in order to return to normal. So, um, except I, I want to read everything Tol Tolkien wrote. So, I'm looking hard for the Cimmerillion. Um, found children of Hurin. A um, couple of the stories that he wrote. I've heard he actually did a Beowulf translation that I might, if I could find, I'll pick up. But um, this is one of the ones when I saw it, I said, I'm grabbing it. Um, I know nothing about this, and I probably don't even know how to pronounce it. Um, Ascheolsis, the Osteria, Agnemon, the Liberation Bearers, and Eumendes. Um, but this is a really nice Penguin Classics edition. They had two of these. Um, this in Ultriesta, the only trilogy in Greek drama that survives from antiquity, Ascheestus, I'm probably saying these so wrong, um, took, took as his subjects the bloody chain of murder and revenge in the royal family of Argos as they move from darkness to light, the rage of self-governance, sorry my phone's going off, um, from primitive ritual to civilized institution, their spirit of struggle and regeneration becomes an everlasting song of celebration. So... I am not well versed in classics. I didn't go to college and I never studied English. So this is just me wanting to learn more and I'm really excited to do so. So I hope to pick this up uh, very soon. I don't know a ton about it, but um, I may look up some reviews before I actually read it and try to see what I'm getting into and um, how to read it. Because uh, currently reading Sound of the Fury and it's nice to know what you're getting into before you get there because I had some warning about Benji's first chapter, and that helped a lot. So, um, and then I found this, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Um, heard about it in school. It was, sorry, I had some. I heard about it in school, and it was one of those where I never thought I'd read it, and then I found it for less than $2, and I was like, you know, with everything going on, and um, learning about literature that portrays black people in different ways, um, the Sound and the Fury does that. Um, another book that I just got, um, Their Eyes Were Watching God. This is one of the ones I want to talk about too. Um, this is by Zora Neale Hurston. Um, I just wanted to pick up some of those books and, and learn more about that culture. Um, also wanted to pick up some Du Bois, but I haven't found that yet. And I really just want to expand my mind and pick up books of different topics and, and, and learn. You know, that's, that's why I read. I want to learn. I want to enjoy. Okay, so... A couple of these, um, these were like two or threes as well. Um, Charlie and the Chopper Factory. I don't know where I set the other one, but I also got the Great Grass Elevator. Great Glass Elevator. Sorry, words are hard. Um, and so grabbed both of these, really nice covers. I, as I've said before, I like Roald Dahl. Um, he's a fun author and wanted to read some more of his stuff. Never read the Great Glass Elevator, but I have read this one. Um, and so picked up these, probably two at the same time. And then The Handmaid's Tale, um, picked it up, uh, wanted to read it. I've watched season one of the show and enjoyed it. I, I mean, it wasn't my favorite TV ever, but I enjoyed it. My wife really, really enjoyed it. Um, and the story is very interesting, so I'd like to check it out. Um, the Garden of Rama, this is not the first book. I thought about not picking up the rest of the series until um, I found the first book, but 
the other day I was just like, you know what? I'm going to try it just in case. I could probably sell it on eBay for like $4 if I wanted to. So even I'll pick this one up because it's in such good condition. And if I find the first book, which I think is Rama, and then it's Rama 2, and I think this is book 3, um, I'll pick it up. But I've heard it's great sci-fi. So, you know, it may, it may be right up my alley. Oh, here's the Great Grass Elevator. I, was, I, I didn't know where I had it, but I, I found it. Um, I also I have one copy of um, Brave New World, but I like this cover better. Um, I, I I started reading it and put it down, so I may I it may be a long time before I get to it. But I looked in the back and it said thirteen fifty as the sell price, so I said yeah I'm gonna get it. It's pretty cheap. Um, Stuart Little. I've seen the movie, but I've never read the book, so excited about that. Same guy that did uh, Charlotte's Web. Um, the Giver is my first book I ever reviewed on this channel, and I listened to it from the library, so I don't actually have a copy, so I grabbed it. Um, I picked up a couple of Hemingways. Um, I have The Old Man in the Sea and uh, Farewell to Arms. I have never read Ernest Hemingway, but I'm diving into Faulkner and some of these other authors who um, you know, are very much toted as people who you should read, so I figured I'd pick them up and, and give them a shot. Um, also, I've never read any Dan Brown. I've heard it is kind of like mind candy, kind of, um, there's not a whole lot here, but it's enjoyable, kind of a thriller ride. Um, so I figured I'd try one of his books, and Da Vinci Code seems to be the most famous. I've seen the movie, so I kind of know what goes on, so, um, enjoyed the movie. You know, I, I know it's not historically accurate or anything like that, but, um, Larry Niven, um, Neutron Star, heard good things about Larry Niven, haven't read any of his books. I also have Ringworld, which um, supposedly is very good as well. Um, so we'll see. Um, really trying to up my uh, sci-fi cred, so we'll see how this works. So now we'll dive into Half Price Books, the books I got there. Um, try to do it pretty sort of, eh, sort of kind of rapid fire. Um, this time, the reason I got so many is because I um, went through the clearance section. So that's a lot of the reason why I got a bunch of books this time. But uh, so we have The Portrait of an Artist, a portrait of the artist of a young man, James Joyce. Codex Cantina was going through this. I said, aha, yes. And it was a dollar. Ted Decker. Um, he's a Christian fantasy author from what I've understood. Haven't read any of his books, but it was also a dollar uh, in the clearance section. Uh, the Case for Christ, which is a dollar. A book I've heard of many times I'd like to read. So actually, this is The Case for Faith. Uh, Case for Christ is a different one. Um, by Lee Strobel, I believe. Yeah, Lee Strobel. Yeah, he's the author of The Case for Christ. So this is not what I thought it was. Huh. Um, they have a lot of collected editions of authors. And um, this one has George R. R. Martin, Patrick Rothfuss, Robin Hobb, Paulo Bagliupi, Brandon Sanderson, Ursula K. Le Guin, Kate Elliott, Orson Scott Card, and many others. I've read almost all of these authors. And the reason I actually picked it up is because the story that Brandon Sanderson put in here, I thought would probably be like one of the ones from Ars Arcanum. Oh, it also has N.K. Jemison in it and Julia Marlier, who I'm currently reading. Um, I like Kate Elliott. I read a bunch of her stuff. We got Tad Williams in here, um, who is not a Michael Moorcock, but Rissen is the Brandon Sanderson book, and I've never read that one. Ooh, Patrick Rothfuss is in here too. Uh, the Fords by Brent Weeks. So a bunch of authors that I just love, and it's a bunch of short stories by them. Um, and I'm just really excited to, like, when I saw everybody that was in here, I was like, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab this. And it was uh, $7.99. So, yeah. I have to say, by the way, Half Price Books has great book stickers. These things come off ridiculously easy and leave almost no uh, stuff on your book. I mean, they peel off just like that, like super easy and leaves like, it doesn't have the gooky, nasty nonsense. Half Price Books, you guys are doing great with your stickers. So back in, this is not clearance section, but it was $3.99. This is The Moat in God's Eye by Larry Niven and Jerry Pornelli. Um, I have heard wonderful things about this as a sci-fi book, and I am excited to read it. I saw it on the shelf, and I snagged it right away. Um, clearance section kids book. It was one of the ones, like I said, I'm picking them up slowly, getting the hardcover editions. This was $2 instead of uh, $1. But it's the Carnivorous Carnival. This is book nine. Um, so yeah, I think I have two books left to pick up in this series. I've only read the first one, by the way. But um, me and Christy Lewis were talking about uh, Promise of Blood, the French Revolution, and how we, we knew some stuff about it. And I think I wanted to learn a whole lot more. So I looked up books that 
um, were good about the French Revolution, and this is by Alexis de Tocqueville. Tokyoville. Tokyoville. That sounds a lot more French. Um, but it was translated by Stuart Gilbert. This is the old regime in the French Revolution. So supposedly this author wrote something about um, America that is like his most famous work. But this was very, very highly rated about the French Revolution, and they had it for $7. So I grabbed it. I'm not going to peel that stick right now. All right, sorry, trying to trying to hop through this real quick because this video is going to be long if I don't. Um, found Blood Rights. I've been looking for it. I was like, hey, they've got it. They had three copies of it, actually. This is the only Dresden Files book they had there, um, and it's the book I needed. So guess where it's going? It's on the TBR. I'm really excited to read Tad Williams. Um, this is Otherland, Volume 1. I've heard people tell me that this is where Tad Williams shines. It, also, Dragonbone Chair, which I found as well on the same... Um, he had his own little section, but um, Otherland and the Dragonbone Chair, both of these I want to get. I also picked up, um, where is that book? The Witchwood Crown the other day. Um, it's over there. I'm not going to go grab it, but um, it is the Dragonbone Chair Series 2. Um, so really get, Tad Williams, I've heard so many good things about, and I want to get into his series for sure. And last one from um, Half Price Books is Prince of Fools by Mark Lawrence. This is the Red Queen's War book one. Um, I heard good things about uh, Joe's book reviews was reading um, one of his series and he's like, man, it's great. It's right up the alley of what I think I would like. Um, Mom actually gave me a challenge to read some more female authors. So I'm not gonna read this right now. It, she, said, she said to me, she said, um, you have a very masculine reading taste. And I said, you're right. Um, so I'm gonna work on reading some more female authors for sure. Um, I, I want to diversify a little bit there because um, she kind of gave me some crap about um, Dreamer's Pool. I said, you know, I just, it feels like lacy writing. And, you know, I couldn't describe it really well, but it was kind of like talking about how um, it felt very delicate. And, and I, I don't even know if that's a, a thing. But for me, when she gave me that challenge, I was like, you know, I, I was just looking in the mirror going, yeah, you're right. I read a lot of male-centric fantasy, which I've heard Mark Lawrence is very male-centric fantasy. Um, but it was $3.99, so I snagged it. All right, and this will end it. This is the Goodwill. Um, got a, It was, had a good day at Goodwill that day. Um, this, was, this was two days ago? Yeah, Monday. Monday. Um, so Jonathan Swift, uh, Gulliver, Gulliver's Travels on these really nice Pingle Classics edition. Um, the Fall of Hyperion, I actually finished my Hyperion series. I had Hyperion and Ed, Ed, Edimian, um, and so I found The Fall of Hyperion and The Rise of End, Endymion, which is also in here, um, at that store. Um, Piers Anthony, I remember liking him as a teenager. This is like book seven of a series that I only have book one and two of, but, you know, I grabbed it just in case. No Country for Old Men by Cormac McCarthy. I've never read anything by him. Um, I watched part of the road and it scared me and I stopped watching it. Um, and so we'll see, but I've heard no country for all men is an amazing movie. So when I saw the book, I grabbed it. Um, like I said, the rise of Endymion and I am not saying that right, but, um, this book four in that series. And I'm so excited to read this. Um, this one was just a really nice copy. I picked it up because I like nice copies. Ooh. And then uh, Data Domain left their business card in there for me. But this is We Too, Victoria and Albert, Rulers, Partners, and Rivals by Gillian Gill, author of Nightingales. Um, Queen Victoria is an interesting character. I mean, she started the Victorian age. Like, um, she's one of the most famous queens in, of England. And um, this looked like a really cool book and um, try to knock into some nonfiction stuff. I saw it and I was like, hey, this might be really good. All right, and last but certainly not least, I saw the fifth season, it was in great shape. So I said, yes, I will grab this. Um, it is almost available at my library. Um, my TBR was just too big. And so I put it on hold for like two weeks. So probably first of next month, I will read this one. And I'm excited, I have a physical copy and the library is gonna give me the audiobook version too. So this will be cool. Excited for it.
And that is all for this uh, kind of sort of over many, many months book haul, um, but had two really good grabs of the last couple days. So wanted to share that with you and excited for the future. So um, if you guys want to subscribe to the channel, you can. Hopefully this video wasn't too rambling and weird. And um, I will film another video in like five minutes that goes over a article I wanted to share with you guys. So I will be back for that in just a moment.